Yeah, well, I mean, even 25% we're thankful for at this point. Eastern Washington has gotten the green light to move into phase two, what that means for local businesses who can open now with more capacity. Plus. The coldest weather hits tonight, the windiest weather hits tonight as well as I'm tracking just how low our wind chills are going to go by Friday morning. Then Governor Inslee decided to allow phase two to begin on Sunday. We'll hear how local leaders were involved in that decision. Let's start with some breaking news here. Spokane police asking for your help finding a missing 13-year-old missing girl. Bailey Cedarblom left her home between 2 and 5 this morning. She had previously told her friend she was meeting someone near her home in northeast Spokane, but tonight she is still missing. The 13-year-old recently had a medical procedure. She's in need of her medication. Bailey is 5 foot 8 with long brown hair and may be wearing a white beanie and gray sweatshirt. If you have seen her in the last 12 hours, please call Crime Check at 456-2233. A seven of our eight uh, regions of our healthy Washington plan will open up in phase two. This will mean increased economic activity, increased access to restaurants and the like. We're very happy about this. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm Regina on Eastern Washington can start to breathe a sigh of relief as we're moving to phase two of the healthy reopening plan, meaning that more businesses can open and it's one more step to normalcy. But what are the phase two guidelines? So under phase two guidelines, indoor dining, indoor entertainment and gyms are allowed to open at 25% capacity. Outdoor sports are also able to resume with a maximum of 200 people and a maximum of five people from two different households are allowed to have indoor gatherings. Now we got here by making three of the four requirements needed to reopen. Our case rate is decreasing by 43%. It only needs to be 10%. So that's one. Our hospitalizations have gone down 17% again, meeting that 10% requirement. That's two. Our ICU capacity is at 73%. It's just needs to be under 90. So that's three. And our test positivity rate is sitting at 10%. It needs to be less than that. So we don't meet that particular requirement right now. Now it is possible that we could move back in phases. So in two weeks, Eastern Washington must still meet three out of the four requirements. If only two or fewer are met, we could return back to phase one the following Monday. Now, originally the governor had said that these new requirements would be effective on Monday, which some local leaders pushed back on. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward tweeted this, asking the governor to show some love to restaurants by allowing them to open on Valentine's Day. And it seems that the governor listened just a few hours after his original announcement. Inslee said that regions moving into phase two can begin a day early. That came after local state representative Marcus Richelli, whose district covers most of Spokane, said he had a conversation with Inslee's staff. I think uh, the conversation was really well received with governor staff. I've been working with them on a lot of different policy bills, and I just said, I think, you know, if we're moving ahead on Monday, this could be a real win-win for everybody just to push it back a day. And it's it's not a lot for a lot of struggling restaurants, but it is something that is a glimmer of hope. Now, Richelli had previously spoke with us about the announcement that Eastern Washington would move to phase two and the push to move forward a day earlier came due to Valentine's Day being one of the biggest economic days for the hospitality industry. He also says that he has spoke with local restaurant owners that are excited by the news to move on to phase two. Well, with new guidelines in place, restaurants are gearing up for Valentine's Day adjustments. Sunday will signal the first time many businesses are allowed to open their indoor dining space. Crime Two's Brenda T. Jones caught up with a restaurant in Spokane and explains how they've managed to stay afloat during these closures. It's been nearly a full three months since restaurants in Spokane had to close their doors once again because of this pandemic. In that time, there's been a plethora of adjustments as businesses in the hospitality industry focus on their survival. Just trying to get creative, really, and think of uh, how we can keep people employed. Right off the river on Division Street, the Osprey Restaurant and Bar has adapted to every protocol thrown their way. 
as Spokane gets the go-ahead for moving into Phase 2. It's an opportunity to build upon the grit they've already displayed. Um, they're comfortable, they're heated, I mean, great view of the river, and uh, they've been a big uh, asset for us through, throughout this uh, tough time. Throughout the pandemic, they've implemented new ways to serve the community. A new drive through barbecue option is located out front. On their patio are the igloos that align with the former guidelines that allowed only outdoor dining. I think people just needed a little bit of hope and I think this gives us that little boost that, you know, a lot of people just needed right now, right? Would it give us some good? The Ospreys just one of several restaurants that can bring indoor dining back at 25% capacity on Valentine's Day, something the Washington Hospitality Association has consistently pushed for. 25% capacity is a step into the right direction, but they remain confident that restaurants can operate in a safe and healthy manner at 50%. We're going to keep working for those things, but we are going to enjoy the moment. And I hope everybody has a great Valentine's Day. Phase two signals a positive after a year filled with challenges. Places like the Osprey have adjusted as protocols change. Now they get to welcome even more customers back while they wait for what the future holds under phase three. Yeah, well, I mean, even 25% we're thankful for at this point. From Spokane. Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. And today's announcement, certainly some welcome news for restaurants and bars, but for many small businesses, 25% capacity simply is not enough to make money, especially after being shut down for months. Rima Shaver owns Bistango Martini Lounge and Bistro in downtown Spokane, and she's thankful that she can bring customers back inside, but says a 25% limitation on guests makes it nearly impossible for her to make money. Is it difficult? for you to, to make money or turn a profit as a business at 25% capacity? Absolutely. I mean, I'll be lucky if I break even, but the way I see it is the case I can bring two, two employees back. I can, you know, for me, um, you can't just sit and complain about something. You have to do something about it. So I did. I'm opening at 25%. Now, Shaver says she really wants a community to be healthy, but she believes that also means keeping the businesses and the economy healthy. She says she'll keep pushing to reopen at 50 percent capacity in order to bring back more employees and hopefully turn a profit. But today's announcement doesn't only affect restaurants and bars, but also thousands of high school students around our region will have some sort of a semblance of high school sports in just a few weeks. Brenna Green joins, joins us now live in the newsroom, so she caught up with some of the people affected. Brenna? Yeah, Regina, a few of our high school sports slated to start in a few weeks were able to compete regardless of the phase we were in, but for football, volleyball, and girls soccer players, today's announcement was everything they've been waiting to hear for 10 months. And the GSL volleyball games will start February 23rd. Football will begin Saturday, February 27th. World soccer, provided we stay in phase two, will start March 1st. And cross country, which can happen regardless of the phase we're in, will begin March 6th. I spoke with Gonzaga Prep quarterback Ryan McKenna and Shadow Park football head coach Jim Mace about what today's announcement means to them. Just a little context for Jim's quote. I broke the news to him over text before our interview. It's exciting. It's obviously a great feeling just to be able to have something to look forward to again and know that you're working towards something that's going to actually happen. I can be honest. I mean, uh, when, it, when it's quiet around my house, a lot of times I'm like, are we even going to have a season? Are we even going to have a chance? Are we you know, blowing smoke to these people and families and kids? And when you sent me that text, I started thinking, wow, like <laughs> I wasn't blowing smoke. They are going to get a game. We have more online at crem.com from both Ryan and Jim. Meanwhile, a full slate of college basketball tonight. Gonzaga women, Eastern men, and Idaho women all had big games this evening. We'll have more later in the show. All right, Brenna, thank you. Well, now to our other big story of the night, and it's those dangerously low temperatures just absolutely painful out there right now. Thomas Patrick joining us now nice and toasty in the weather center in the studio. So Thomas, how low are we expecting those temperatures to get tonight? I kind of don't want to know, but I want it. <laughs> well, easily single digits and okay. man, if it weren't for the wind, I think we would all just kind of bundle up and say, OK, that isn't too bad, but it's the wind that cuts right through you like a knife and the winds are getting stronger as of this hour. So I mean, it isn't just marginally unpleasant. It's 
just brutal out there as of this hour. The wind chill advisories kick in at 1 a.m. tonight and they last until 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's largely when our wind chills will be below zero, but could be as low as negative 20. That's what it will feel like outside first thing in the morning. This does include Spokane, Coeur d'Alene and most of our northern communities. These are the latest wind gusts we got pretty much as of this hour. We got up to a 30 mile per hour wind gust in Spokane and Deer Park, almost 40 mile per hour wind gusts up in Sandpoint. So those winds are pushing those wind chill values well below zero. These are the expected low temperatures, easily single digits looking at seven in Spokane, four in Coeur d'Alene, minus three in Bonners Ferry. But as I said, the wind chill is going to be much, much colder than that. In fact, as of the last half hour, it was already 12 degrees going seven for tonight. That'll mark the coldest day since March 4th, 2019. Colder than we've already seen this winter and last year as well. That's just the cold. There's also still snow in southern Washington and parts of the Seattle and Puget Sound area, and we will have our fair share of snow not only into this weekend, but into the first part of next week. So I'm covering all those days with snow chances and when this cold snap is going to break. All coming up in a few minutes. All right, Thomas, thank you. Well, when temperatures drop as low as our current conditions have, finding a place to shelter can sometimes be the difference between life and death. And so the Way Out Shelter in Spokane is housing more than 100 people at their Center for the Homeless. The Salvation Army took over the facility back in August, and its original purpose was to provide relief to the temporary shelter at the Spokane Arena and serve as a safe location amid the coronavirus outbreak. You know, every year uh, there are numerous people who die in the United States because they're, they freeze to death outside. And so it's very important to have a shelter like this one here that is open and uh, serves people food so they can be safe inside and not uh, outside. And the downtown shelter has been directing any homeless individuals to open beds throughout the city and throughout this cold snap. They'll provide transportation to anyone that can't make it into their own shelter because of capacity limits. So good news there. One Boise couple survived an avalanche near Idaho City Tuesday. Hear how they were able to escape thanks to some quick thinking and preparation. That's coming up next. Plus, it's not only restaurants and bars that are able to open in phase two. Entertainment venues can start to invite guests back. We get their reaction to the governor's announcement.